Well, a happy foggy morning to everybody. Yesterday afternoon I went out and set a few trail cams. I've put it at the front of the video of me going out and put, placing them about because uh, the thumbnail of the video is what's lurking about and the survival tin that I'm going to be showing you that I'm going to be using in three days time. The what's lurking around part of it is I've had about five different accounts over the last couple of years of big cats being seen on this bit of property and the 75 or 70 plus acres of waterboard forest along the downs here. Um, I'm just at my wit's end with it really, so I thought, right, I'll do something about it. I mean, I'm not sure myself 100% because I'm up here so much. I haven't bumped into it up here, thank God, touch wood. But uh, on the other hand, it makes you question all these credible witnesses are seeing it. I won't go into too much detail of all the stories because it just makes it prolonged and dragged out. What I will do is um, once a month I might add an update on that though, with the trail cam situation, see if what we caught if we catch anything at all. I think it's going to be a long haul. Um, if there is one out there, I think we're going to have to take a bit of time. It's going to take a bit of time finding it, I think, because they're so elusive. Even in the countries they're meant to be in, you're lucky to see one. So, food sources here. I've checked all the streams that we've got around here. I mean, as you see on some of my videos, we've got the water source, got the food source, got the foliage. Our country's pretty well-rounded for weather. They can adapt anyway. So, I don't want to devote this to being a, um, a strange encounter channel at all but because I have had so many people come up and ask me and, t and tell me what they've seen especially down right down the other end where the railway goes through a uh, woman see it stalking along the bank after rabbits last year and then obviously this year we've had a, um, a, a retired police officer come to me uh, I've had a gamekeeper from up the road come to me asking me about it over the last few years so yeah, I just thought I'm not going to throw it out. And this last encounter has tipped me over the edge. I thought, right, I want to do something about it. I can't go sitting in my um, sitting in a hide all day long looking for it. You know, be a bit far fetched. But I thought it'd be interesting to put it on the channel. Four or five trail cams out. It's not going to hurt anybody, and it's going to be there long term. So if we see anything, I'll be sure to update you. If not, I will give you a monthly update on the big cat situation. So uh, anyway, let's have a look in the survival tin I'm going to be using next week. Right, so here we go, this is the one. This isn't a shop bought tin completely. I've just added bits to it, as you might have seen in my other videos, I talk about adding to survival stuff. I mean, as you buy them, they are sort of a uh, one fits all sort of thing. Um, so you have to add your own bits and pieces that you're gonna wanna take with you, or take out the bits that you're not so keen on and add, it, add better stuff. My survival tin is a survival tin. But on the other hand, I suppose it's a bit of a hybrid survival tin. I would like to try and get the most out of a little sort of um, tobacco sized tin. But one, if you drop it and lose it, hence why it's in a, a red um, zip up pouch, is to one, protect it, keep it shut, and also you can keep your medical around the tin rather than in the tin. Because med medical stuff is a major, major part of obviously survival if you get sick or you need medicine. So let's take a closer look of what's actually inside it. So here we go, this is what it looks like out of the packaging. Um, most survival tins are uh, pretty much got the same ingredients in them for the same key role. That's to keep you alive and safe for however long you may be lost for. These are just sort of basic things, so um, let's just quickly run through them. So basically what we're sitting on is a... It's what the military use, they're a cotton sort of bandana, good for filtering water, uh, cleaning, making temporary bandages, etc, uh, etc. Et We've got a Zippo, uh, zip up, two litre storage plastic bag, easy to collect water, low from the ground with rather than a container. We've got our purification tablets, there's ten there, that'll keep us going for a while and will we'll do us a good job when we can't boil it and filter it the other way medical and sewing kit so this is a very basic one we would like to take a whole complete um, medication box but we can't this is just basic stuff that we're going to need to take along with us some some pills just in case we need need them for emergency reasons there's not loads in there but they've written on what's in there some cleaning wipes sterile cleaning wipes and some different plasters and, and patches just in case we get cuts or anything worse. We can make a bandage up, but at least we can clean it out. We've got clean water. We've got a uh, small fishing kit. This is inside a little bag just in case we have any spillages. 
all it is is we've got a pencil pencils cut down it's got about 25 30 meters of fishing line different all different sized uh, barbed hooks so that we don't have any escapees and remember big hooks catch big fish small hooks catch catch big fish and small fish so keep a variety in there different lead shots and everything else that go along with the fishing kit there's no lures or anything because um, we can sort of pick up and forage for a fishing bait it's not something that I tend to keep in there we can also make any sort of hairs or colourful shrimp look alike with the cord that we've got so on the inside of the tin we've got a signalling mirror glued in there a little button compass that's obviously that is free and a little tiny um, blue light for working around in the dark rather than using anything else double sided knife we would all like to carry a uh, decent survival knife as all the time but it's not possible or legal so carry a folder in the tin one side for camp craft one side is to be kept razor sharp for skinning and any other fine fine work that we need a good knife for so one blade sort of not sacrificial but more less important than the other but still important and one very nice sharp knife for anything else that we may need got a candle over the back that will keep us um, out of trouble if we have trouble with a fire or anything else it can be blown out relit blown out relit to a uh, move fire and everything else little bag of sugar just in case and also a little bag of salt survival whistle just in case we're in light today where it's really foggy or you can't physically see the, the the people that are trying to rescue you or what's trying to rescue you whistle comes in very handy um rather than matches I prefer a brand new, keep it brand new, don't use it, check up on it, windproof lighter, last a little bit longer. Matches are good, if that's all you've got, then that's all you've got. Might not be the first time one of these has got you out of a situation. Um, this will hold two litres of water, so another water feature, very good for carrying water, coupled with this, um, with this cloth, yeah, it's a very good water bladder. Snare wire. 110% recommend snare wire. They're in most survival outfits, but that can't be left at home. Um, it, it will give you plenty of options for plenty of different game to catch. So likewise with the needle and thread, you can thread up berries on, on the thread and stake it down and birds will come along, eat the berries and swallow the thread. Hey presto, you've got a bird to eat. Wire saw goes without saying exactly what it says on the tin. That's going to cut through most wood can even cut through bone so yeah that's another good piece of kit to have an added extra and i've only got it because it fits in the top of the um the covering of the tin is a is a decent little led light now we're not going to be up reading with this in a survival situation um this is going to be for signaling definitely 100 percent. if it's pitch black this will you can do an sos code or if something's flying over and it's pitch black tie this off to a piece of cord wave it round and round in circles it will give out a massive area of light now this is stringed up because it's meant to really be kept on your person in case all this lot ends up going in the river or going in the drink and you can't get it back if this is round your neck on this piece of cord you're going to have a different survival um, tin really, well, a different survival kit this is a little miniature survival kit you have got this all fits in the tin still You've got your, your tiny knife, razor sharp, hacksaw blade, which will again be a cutting tool. This is wrapped with about 40, 50 metres of this um, strengthened piece of cordage. Um, and then also your fire striker and whatnot. Kept on your person because, as I say, if that lot does decide to leave your side down a mountainside or in a river or in a lake and it sinks to the bottom, you're going to be buggered. So keep that round your neck if you if you do carry one. Bit of tin foil. That again could be made up as a, a signalling. Or it can be for harvesting water, like catching water, um, starting a fire if you're against the elements and you cannot start a fire because it's so damp. That will give you a little platform to start a fire on. Many other, uh, the old tin foil, there's many tricks you can do with that. And then this is a bit of a luxury. Um, it fits up the side of the survival tin in, in the little pouch. 
it's a um, survival blanket basically a foil blanket that can be made into shelter so this generally can be left out but um, I'd rather keep it in there if it'll fit because it's a shelter a blanket it will insulate you from the floor keep you warm and yeah I, I mean to be honest with you they're not in everyone's survival pack but uh, they're definitely in mine definitely worth trying to pack it up in there the reason why I carry mine in this um, this was just like a bought out of Asda which would be like Walmart if you're in America. Um, this little pouch, obviously, has a little bit of tinder in there, cotton wool. It all fits inside there, so it's a bit of a hybrid survival tin mine. Um, that packs into there, uh, and it adds all of this protected and nice and easy to see if it was dropped or lost on a trail. Having that uh, tobacco sort of coloured tin, if you lost it, especially in the autumn months it could be a bit of a pain in the back to find so that is what i'll be taking out and that will be in the next few days thank you very much for joining me again um if the big cat topic interests you stay tuned i'll keep you updated on that what we do and what we don't find thank you for being there for running through the survival tin i'm going to be using in three days time just a bit of an insight to what's in there really so i'm going to enjoy myself under the tarp whilst I can and I'm not lost and I shall see you very soon have a good one